If you don't consider yourself to be a gamer, I want to convince you to try video games because you're missing out on the best entertainment available. Games can tell better stories and provide a richer experience than TV, movies, and even some books. I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? I said what I said. I've been playing games for longer than literally anything in my life, and they have whatever you're looking for. Action, story, relaxation, romance, drama, stress relief, tactical problem solving, comedy, camaraderie, socialization, whatever you want, video games have it. The advantage they have that no other medium can match is that you interact with games instead of just observing them. But you say you don't know how to play games. Understandable, look at this controller. There is so much happening. There are 18 buttons on this thing. A lot of games use every one of them, plus commands that require two or three button pushes at the same time. Don't fear, I'm gonna show you some games that are much more casual than you're probably imagining. And I don't mean casual in a bad way. I mean, they don't ask much of you, but they still provide a great time. First up, we've got puzzle games. Now, something you might not realize about video games is all of them are actually puzzles. Yes, look at this ridiculousness happening on screen. That's just a flashy puzzle. It looks like there is a lot going on, but the puzzle is doing it efficiently. I'm actually not even pushing that many buttons here, but that's an extreme example, not what I recommend for you, soon to be gamer. When I say puzzle games, I mean exactly what you think I mean. Like this one, this is called The Witness. Note to editor Greg, uh, put the title of all the games in the description. This game is only these box puzzles that you draw lines through. You'll find these scattered all over this island. No bad guys, no story, no action. Three buttons you gotta push, and yet somehow this game will suck you in. It doesn't even have any words. There are symbols on the puzzles and the game shows you the rules of each symbol without telling you. It's genius design. How badly will this get in your head? I used to take pictures of the puzzles that I was stuck on and then at work I would draw them out on paper so I could take time solving them there. One time I was up late and I was on this one particular puzzle, had me stumped, it was really late, I was tired, I thought, you know what, it's time to call it quits. I was laying down and in that small little window, right as you're about to fall asleep and your brain just kind of unlocks and relaxes, the solution came to me. Yes, I was thinking about the puzzle as I was falling asleep. I got up, turned the game back on, solved that puzzle, slept like a baby. Some puzzle games do have a story. Take this one, for example, the Talos Principle. In this game, you play as a robot and you are solving puzzles for a voice in the sky that calls itself Elohim. Throughout the game, you're gonna find these computer terminals that fill in the story and also contain someone or something that begins to make you question what it is that you're even doing and asks interesting philosophical questions about the nature of intelligence and the mind and the definition of free will. It's a cool story with interesting themes and lovely, lovely puzzles. Both of those games have a fun little extra layer to them and once you see it, then you see it everywhere. But maybe you're not a puzzler. You don't like them. That's okay because our second category is satisfying and relaxing. These are the farming and ranching simulators. These guys are low stress, slow paced, and oh, so satisfying. It's like a digital zen garden. Popular among them are games like Stardew Valley, where you inherit a farm that is completely overgrown, and you start to cultivate it, all while making friendships and courting relationships in town. There's nice peaceful music, and you get the simple joy and satisfaction of watching your wild land turn into something organized and profitable. Similarly, and maybe more famously, there is Animal Crossing, which carries the same theme, but with cutesy 3D animals. There's also a, a raccoon, I think, that you get indebted to. I, I don't know, I just see the memes. If you like this idea, but you want a change of perspective, there are these slime rancher games. Similar concept, you've got this futuristic farm and you're harvesting poop from these adorable little slime creatures. It's crystal poop, it's not gross, I promise. Look at these slimes, they're little kitties. You explore your island and you suck them and their food up and you keep them on your little farm and you sell their crystalline poo called port. The first game in the series had a little bit of a story with you exploring the island that you're on and finding these breadcrumb messages from the previous owner. The second game is supposed to have more of a story. If you're like me, your life is in constant chaos flux, but your digital, what? What the? At the very least, your digital garden will always be nice and tidy. These games can also be paused, which is a very big plus when your tiny roommates have problems. I do the what's in the cup segment because people don't actually think there's something in here, and I promise you there really is. Today, uh, I made myself a latte, but maybe it's a mocha latte. I put some chocolate collagen powder. I've been putting collagen powder in my coffee because it's, I'm trying to make my joints not hurt so bad. That's the oldest thing that I've ever 
said. So if this video doesn't get posted, it's because I crumbled into a pile of dust before I could post it. If I made this with espresso and milk, but I put chocolate powder, would it be a, a chocolate latte or is it just a mocha? This third game is borderline casual because it is a little competitive and fast paced, but I still think it fits because of its small time commitment. That game is Rocket League. It's soccer, but with a rocket powered car hitting a giant ball. I think it's called football for all of you non back to back World War champs. I've got 1776 reasons I don't call it football. <laughs> As I said, this one requires a little bit of reaction time and a few more buttons to push, but it's genuinely not too complex. There's a single player mode so you can feel out the controls, but eventually you will need to go online in random teams of three. Sometimes you have a good game, sometimes bad. The nice thing is there's only five minutes on the clock. If you've got a spare few minutes, you can drop in for a quick game of Rocket League and then drop right back out. No more commitment is required, and did I mention it's 100% free? This game is also one of those cool things that's really simple to learn, but almost impossible to master. Once you figure out the game and you want to be in awe and or feel terrible about yourself, I recommend looking up Rocket League Trick Shots. It is amazing what some people are able to do in this game. Our fourth category is kind of a broad one. They're generally referred to as walking simulators and they are for people who purely want story. No puzzles, no action, just an immersive story that you get to be a part of. The one I think really kicked this genre off was a game called Gone Home. You play as a person going back to their childhood home and it is abandoned. You walk through the house interacting with objects and piecing together the story of what has happened to your family. Another popular one in this category is called Everyone's Gone to the Rapture. I haven't played either one, but I have played this guy, Firewatch. You play as a guy who is running away from his problems by spending the summer alone in a Firewatch station out west. During the game, you communicate with somebody in a different tower via radio, you explore the wilderness, you learn about yourself, and uncover a dark secret. <laughs> Again, no bad guys, no gunfights, no reaction time, just a really cool immersive story that you get to experience instead of just observing. Our last category is party games. Now, if you buy a Nintendo Switch, it has a ton of these. They're usually Mario themed but there's one particular game that's available almost everywhere. And again, this one's free. It's called Fall Guys. This is another one that's a little competitive and you do have to play online, but the controls are very simple and fun. You and 60 other people control these little bean guys as you race to the finish line in the most absurd obstacle course imaginable. Sometimes you gotta grab something, but for the most part, it's just run, jump, and dive. It's frantic and silly. And if you get knocked out, that's okay. Just fire it up and run the garish gauntlet again. If you like good entertainment, I hope you give video games a try because they really are outdoing other media by a mile. When you can't play video games, but you still want good entertainment, I always recommend a good reading of fiction on Audible. If you want to try the service for a month completely free, you will find an affiliate link in the description. Let me know what your favorite game is or one that sounds interesting that you want to try. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.